Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. We're out right and about again. This time we're at the Menlin Park Shopping Centre in Pretoria. Now, we're just about as far away from the sea as you can get. It's more than 500 kilometres, to my reckoning, to the nearest beach. But we're here to meet an amazing entrepreneur by the name of Fats Lazaridis, a man who made a fortune out of fish. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Pleasure, Chris. But um, just tell me just a little bit about your background. Where do you come from? I come from immigrant parents. I got to South Africa in 1960. So um, I went to Sunnyside Primary, then I went to Pretoria Boys High. That's when I realized me and academics weren't working out. 16 years old, I left school. And then you went through, you did your army service? I did, uh, I went to the Navy. Yeah. I did my national service. Just on 20 years old, I was done. But you didn't know what to do even then, and you said that... Um... But you know, as a youngster, all we did was spoke business. It, that's the was the biggest subject we ever spoke growing up. And your parents, they came here from Greece in 1960. Were they entrepreneurs? No, my dad was a carpenter and my mother was a housewife. And um, that's where I learned my trade. My dad, in my early 20s, taught me how to be a shop fitter. At the same time, I did a second trade. I became a plumber. But my life started off at Squires Loft, 1980. I did one year at Squires Loft as an assistant manager. And, that was and that's where I fell in love with the restaurant business. Okay. That's where I saw myself. That's where I knew that that's my calling. <laughs> From fast forward, because you've actually got the, uh, the background now, you carpentry, shop fitting, and what restaurant have you. At restaurant at Squires, yeah. steakhouses. So what was that moment when you had that germ of an idea that was to become the ocean basket we're sitting in here today. It all started in early 95. My wife uh, found an empty position in the old Menland Park shopping center. The shop was called Biggie Best. I was working at the spa those days as a storeman. In between 83, 84 and uh, 95 had opened and closed and sold restaurants and fast foods and takeaways. So I was in the industry. But it was that day in 1995 where I got the call and we decided, okay, we're going to open up another restaurant, me and my younger brother. And we decided on a seafood restaurant. And what, um, after all these years, steakhouses, and what, what, why suddenly seafood? We believed there was a demand. We believed that nobody could eat accessible seafood. Nobody could eat affordable seafood. Nobody could eat seafood. Seafood was overpriced. And that's when we came up with the idea. Fish and chips, in a pan, calamari, king club, sole, prawns, oysters, all affordable. And we made it affordable. I mean, fish and chips in 1995 was 9 99 And that is how it all started. And it wasn't uh, an easy beginning. I mean, in fact, actually, from where we're sitting here at Menlin Shopping Centre in Pretoria, it's just down the corridor from where we're actually sitting. Is that right? We are literally sitting maybe 100 metres away from the regional shop. But it, and it wasn't an easy beginning for you, was it? Because you had restrictions put on you when you started. The centre and the lease gave me a lot of restrictions. We weren't allowed to do desserts. We weren't allowed to do tea and coffee. We weren't allowed to do salads. We were only allowed to do sell fresh fish, frozen fish, and cooked fish. And we were limited to fish and chips, fish and rice, glass of white wine, glass of red wine, Coke and Tab. That was the menu. Because presumably, uh, this was to protect the other restaurants in the area. It was to protect all the food outlets in the mall. And, and that, that was, that created the success. It and created I, the cues. How did you get it out of it? How did you get around it? Look, after a while, we loved it. We didn't want anything to change because that brought the cues. People brought their own salads, people brought their own coffee, people brought their own flasks, people brought their own wine, people brought their own brandy. <laughs> At the end of the day, is we became the talk of the town. Come eat affordably, great food, cheap food, bring you all your extras. We even had restrictions on closing times. Seven o'clock, the store had to be closed. Sundays, three o'clock, the store had to be closed. Mm. And um, literally were there people queuing up around the block? Look, that was, you know, everybody speaks about challenges, challenges with the landlords, challenges with the banks. Our biggest challenge were the queues. 
the queues. The queues was our biggest challenge. We had strategies written on how to deal with people in the queues. And this is not only on store one. This was store two, three, four, five. Up until the 40th store, the queues never went away. And uh, what size are we doing? Hundreds? Or dozens? The queues? Yeah. 50, 60, 70 people at any given time. Menland Park, the original store, queued for five years. <laughs> Monday to Sunday, there was a continuous queue for the first five years. And meanwhile, inside the restaurant, you were waiting tables, you were doing the everything. So what was happening is my brother was in the kitchen with four or five crew. I was in the front on the till, like a good old Greek boy playing the piano with about three, four waiters. <laughs> and that was it. You had to do everything that yourself. That was it. Do everything ourselves. Sweep the floors, cash out, do the till, do the banking. It was, it, those were the most amazing days of our lives. And just paint a bit of background to those early days. We're talking about the mid 90s and South Africa was a different economy and a different country in those days. It had days. just changed. It just changed. This is early 95 and everybody was uh, weary, but we were ambitious and all we wanted was success. And we saw it from the very, very first store. We saw how people took to us. But even in those days, you know, getting cash was a problem, wasn't it? Never for us. Never for you. What never did you do? Never for us. On, bought never. it on the streets. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. No, I We on. bought, no one will believe me, I tell the people. <laughs> we would only get 50,000 Rand overdraft from a bank. That was it. The rest of the money required, we bought on the streets. We'd find appropriate people that had a lot of money and we'd go and buy money on the streets. No red tape, no going to banks, no credit community, no credit bureaus, no filling out papers. But we had honor, we had dignity. People saw our businesses were successful. So we used to buy money daily. Whatever was required, if we required 200,000 Rand, we'd buy it on the streets. We'd maybe pay back 230, but we continuously bought money on the streets. And that is what made the brand survive. The fact that there was money on the streets, there were people willing to give it to us, and that's what we did. And from that first store, how long did it take you to start building and expanding? By the year 2000, we were, we were very close to 80 stores. So the expansion started immediately. In year two, we already had three stores. And from you, from the, from, once we identified a store in Pretoria at Menland Park, once we identified a store in Santon, a store in Rosebank, a store in Eastgate, we started talking in all the main malls, because that's where the feet was. Once we had the 10 main malls, it just snowballed, went out of control. <laughs> and those typical, I mean, a lot of people watching this will think, oh, that sounds too easy, you know, you, you open up, you do the work yourself, you go on the till, and all of a sudden people queue up and you start expanding. There must be some, a lot of difficulties for you in those early days. Yeah, you know, there were, there's always difficulties in businesses. You know, it's like a roller coaster. It's, it's up and it's down, but the difficulties are difficulties that were easily dealt with. They were emotional issues, they were partner issues. There were, there were issues with staff, there was issues with shrinkage. So th the difficulties wasn't about, about the brand, the difficulties wasn't about the business, the difficulties was always about the people. And that is what we had to always keep in tune and sort out was the people. The most important people were the ones that came forward, identified themselves as workers, as leaders, and those are the people we built the brands with. And they're still all my friends today. So There's a handful of people. Have and you got we, people you started with in 95 who are still working? We out? still got people that started in 95 with us and they're still in the organization today. And we're going into our 19th year. But you, you seem like a, a fairly upbeat entrepreneur, but there must have been days when you felt like throwing in the towel and finishing it, surely. Do you know, I always tell my people, I use a word called productive paranoia. And that is what keeps me alive. I am so paranoid that every morning when I wake up, I bring that word productive paranoia inside me. And you know, there, are, there, there is gonna come a time where you're gonna to wanna to give up, but you just don't do it. You just don't do it. You just allow it to go out of your head and you carry on with what you've got to do for the day. And um, what would you, your advice to an entrepreneur? Someone who, who looks at you now and thinks, well, fight. this man's made it. Fight. Fight, fight, fight. fight. Success, success, success. Position, position, position. Money 
is, is the last thing we say in our organisation. Success is the first thing we say in our organisation. What's the biggest fight you've had in your business, you think? Biggest challenge we've had is right in the beginning um, getting into the landlords to accept us as a brand where we came from nowhere. It was the biggest challenge. We had to go out there and sell ourselves. I had to sell the story, I had to sell the dream, I had to sell the experience, and we only had that one store, Midland Park Shopping Centre. So we had to invite the landlords, bring them for lunch, and then go to every single landlord in the country and just show them that we can do it. And that's what we did. And now you're, you're trying to take fish caught off the coast of Africa to Europe. We're going into Europe, we're in Cyprus, We've opened a, a good region in Cyprus. We're running seven stores in Cyprus with a distribution center. We're um, looking to do a master license in Greece. We're in the process of uh, finalizing um, a deal for Greece. At the same time, we're expanding uh, into Africa. We've got Lesotho, Swaziland, Namibia. We've opened in Nigeria. We're talking to Mozambique and Ghana, and we believe Africa is also another big expansion area. And um, obviously you found the entrepreneurial edge in your uh, time. How do you want people to think of you and remember you, you think, as an entrepreneur? Happy fats that cares and is committed to his passion and his work. <laughs> and yourself, do you have any heroes in the entrepreneur front? I've got a lot of heroes. I live with all my heroes all day. Bill Gates is one of my heroes. There's, 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 there's many, many, many heroes that, that run around my mind. Every hero, uh, every hero for a different occasion. <laughs> and, uh, Lance Armstrong's also one of my heroes. Lance. You understand? Doesn't matter what happened, but he's still one of my heroes. He got me into cycling. Okay. That's my passion. Okay. And uh, the future of the business now? Where do you think you're going? We want to get into the 200 store mark by the year 2015. We're currently sitting on about 165 stores and um, we would like to get into the 400 store mark by the year 2022. So last message then to all entrepreneurs out there who may be struggling and watching you right now, what would you say? Just don't give up. Fight, 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 just don't give up. <laughs> That's Lazaridis, thank you very much for your time and your talk about Ocean Just Thank you very much, thank you. I appreciate it.